Lesson 10, Polynomials, De Marvis Theorem. Use De Marvis Theorem to show that cos 3 theta equals cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta sine squared theta and sine 3 theta equals 3 cos squared theta sine theta minus sine cubed theta. Now first of all, we'll start off and we'll let z equal cos theta plus i sine theta. Now we'll cube both sides of this equation. So z cubed equals cos theta plus i sine theta, all cubed. And then by De Marvis theorem, we know that this becomes cos 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta. Now equally what we could have done, we could have expanded that out. And I'll do that. I'll say that cos theta plus i sine theta all cubed is equal to cos cubed theta plus using Pascal's triangle result plus 3 cos squared theta i sine theta plus 3 cos theta i sine theta squared plus i sine theta all cubed. Now this becomes cos cubed theta plus i times 3 cos squared theta sine theta minus 3 cos theta sine squared theta minus i sine cubed theta. Now on equating the real and the imaginary parts, so here's the real part up here, that one goes with this one and this one, we get the result that cos 3 theta must be equal to cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta sine squared theta and sine 3 theta, the imaginary bit, must be equal to 3 cos, oops, cos squared theta sine theta minus sine cubed theta. Right, in part 2 we have to deduce that tan 3 theta is equal to tan cubed theta minus 3 tan theta over 3 tan squared theta minus 1. Now we'll use these results we got in part 1 to do that. Um, we know of course that the tan of 3 theta is equal to the sine of 3 theta over the cos of 3 theta. So we'll just replace that with what we've got up here and we're going to have 3 cos squared theta sine theta minus sine cubed theta all over cos cubed theta minus 3 cos theta sine squared theta. Okay, now what I need to do is I've got to get this um, a 1 in here and you note that if I divide that by a cos cubed I'll get the 1 but they're around the wrong way so what I'll do I'll rearrange that and I'll multiply top and bottom by negative 1 that brings that sine cubed to the front so I'll have a sine cubed theta minus 3, you don't have to do this, you can do this at the end if you wanted to, sine theta all over, I just like to get rid of these negative signs to begin with because they can cause some problems. There we go. Right now, as I said, we need a 1, so I'm going to divide numerator and denominator by cos cubed theta, and I'm doing that Dividing that by uh, cos cubed, I'm going to get tan cubed theta. And of 
because that's at the start of what we wanted. Up there, there's our tan cubed. And this a minus. Now dividing this by, I'll just write that in. Because we'll just see what that is in a minute. I'll have the cos cubed. When you're setting this out in examination, you should show the examiner what you're doing here. Otherwise, they might thought you think you fudged it. And that's 3 cos theta sine squared theta. I'll have your cos cubed theta here. And of course, that's just going to be 1. Okay, so this becomes tan cubed theta minus. Now here you can see that cos squared will knock off the cos squared on the bottom. So you get a sine on cos, and sine on cos, of course, is tan. So that's 3 tan theta, which is what you wanted. And this one here, same sort of thing. That cos will knock off one of the coses there, leaving you a cos squared. So you get sine squared on cos squared, which is, of course, tan squared. So that's 3 tan squared theta minus 1. And if you look back there, 3 tan cubed theta minus 3 tan theta, got it. And 3 tan squared theta minus 1. Okay, so we've got the required result there. Right, having uh, deduced that, we're going to hence show that tan 7 pi upon 12 is the root of x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals 0. Now you have to look at the, um, the structure of this uh, part 2, and you notice you have a tan cubed and a tan and a tan squared, etc. So if we let x equal tan theta, that's the trick of doing these ones. So I'm going to let, let x equal tan theta in part two, in part two, and we get that tan three theta is equal to x cubed minus three x all over three x squared minus 1. Now if I then let tan 3 theta equal negative 1, we should get this equation up the top here. It's a matter of playing around with this a little bit. You might have started off with 1 and didn't work, so you try negative 1 and oops, there it goes. So you've just got a bit of, bit of trial and error with this stuff. Okay, and now we're going to get x cubed minus 3x equals minus 3x squared plus 1. And take it across the other side, we get x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals 0. And that's the required equation. So 10, 3, 3 equals minus 1 is a solution. Now, I can say then therefore 3 theta must be equal to, because we're in the second quadrant, pi minus pi upon 4. And then we're going to have um, 2 pi in the fourth quadrant, minus pi upon 4. And then we have to go right round again, add another 2 pi to the first one. So that'll be 3 pi minus pi upon 4. Okay, now we'll just tidy it up a little bit. So that becomes 3 theta equals 3 pi upon 4. Then we got 7 pi upon 4. And then we got 11 pi upon 4. Now I divide through by theta. So theta equals pi upon 4. 7 pi upon 12. And 11 pi upon 12. So therefore x equals the tan of 7 pi upon 12 is a root of the polynomial. Right, now in part 4 we have to show that the tan of pi upon 12 plus the tan of 5 pi upon 12 is equal to 4. Now, we know that from part 3 that the roots are, call them alpha, alpha equals the tan of pi upon 4, beta equals the tan 
of 7 pi upon 12 and gamma is equal to the tan of 11 pi upon 12. Tan of pi upon 4 is 1. This is minus the tan of 5 pi upon 12 being in the second quadrant. And this one also being the second quadrant is minus the tan of pi upon 12. Now the sum of the roots, alpha plus beta plus gamma, alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to minus 3. Therefore, 1 minus the tan of pi pi upon 12 minus the tan of pi upon 12 is equal to minus 3. Multiplying throughout by negative 1, we get minus 1 plus the tan of pi pi upon 12 plus the tan of pi upon 12 is equal to 3. Therefore, we get the final result that the tan of 5 pi upon 12, or tan of pi upon 12 actually, plus, one, plus this one is equal to 4.